Some of you may remember when we did a video of the Verve 42, which is the entry model for Azimuth's outboard powered series of fast weekend runabouts. Well, today it's the turn of her bigger sister, the Verve 48, which is basically an upgrade of the original 47. And she's making her international debut here at the Cannes Yachting Festival. And we're going to do it in the company of someone who probably knows more about the Verve series than anybody else, because it was pretty much his idea. And that person is Federico Ferrante, president of Azimut Bonetti Americas. It's true, isn't it? Uh, this was pretty much your idea. In a nutshell, how did the whole Verve concept come about? Well, thank you for thank you for being here, first of all, and thank you for the question because it actually has a pretty interesting answer. Uh, I think the the concept was born from a very modern approach, meaning that it was literally the fusion of two different cultures. So I, I live in the United States now since 20 years. I'm an American citizen myself. My daughter was born in Fort Lauderdale. My wife is American. I've been boating in the U.S. for 20 years. And uh, I've owned several American products. There is nobody like the Americans in terms of uh, center console outboard power. And uh, being there, I says, wait a minute, we don't know how to do that. We don't do a center console. We never done outboard power, but we know how to make boating phenomenal in terms of lounging and having a good time on board with friends and family. Why don't we mix the two? That's how the, the Verve collection came up. It was really a joint of culture, which is, I think, is a very modern way. Now, this is basically an upgrade of the 47. That original boat was tremendously successful. You sold nearly 80 units in, in three years or so. So why is now the right time for an upgrade? Well, the right time uh, is kind of always the, the, the one of the most important the strategic pillar of the Atimo Benetti Group as DNA is in, has been always innovation. So as soon as we have uh, you know, ways to innovate the product, new technologies coming in and the new design and something which when we can provide the consumer with, which add value to the previous model, uh, we always find the right time to make it happen. So the VER48 incorporate all the innovation that the VER47 uh, could have benefit from. So okay, that, that and I, I know in-house you called it Mission Impossible because it wasn't an easy task, but that's what this video is all about. We're going to focus on, on the changes, if you like, between this new model, the 48, and the original 47. And talking of the original boat, one of the, the, the classic features of that and the smaller 42 is what we're standing on now, which is this folding bulwark and you get this swim platform, which I, I think is probably unique on, a, on an outboard boat. But this one looks substantially bigger than on the 47. Is that just me or is that the case? No, it is 100% the case. You're mm. absolutely right. It's actually 35% uh, oh, wow. uh, larger than the 47. And the reason is that on the 47, if you remember here, we have part of the side of the boat, which was not moving. Now we incorporated and the entire uh, side from the same starting point goes all the way to the transom and incorporates in all the walking area in the transom. So we have uh, significantly increased uh, size and this is the, the fun area. This is uh, and that's related to, to the new propulsion you have. We'll have a look at that in a minute, but I just want to step up into the cockpit proper. And I can see that the table remains. The pop-up table, which is when it's in the down position, is completely flush with the deck. There's also an intermediate position to extend this sofa area so it becomes a sun pad with a fill-in cushion. One area that I notice immediately that is different is over here. So I remember on the 47 that there's this galley uh, bar unit extended all the way to the, the starboard bulwark, which meant that the only access fore and after you had was on the other side. You have a passageway here now, which I imagine vastly improves the circulation, right? 100%, so yeah, you definitely have a, a very good memory of the 47. This was, believe it or not, was an extremely complicated part of the re-engineering because we wanted to provide to the consumer the same feature, but we obviously need to do it in a smaller package. So if you think about the fact that in this volume you have two refrigerators, an ice maker, storage for utensils, storage for whatever miscellaneous you want, a double cooking grill, an embedded sink, and a television all in one, that really is a miracle of engineering and the big advantage is exactly what you mentioned. If you, if you look at the passage now, you have a, an extremely comfortable walkthrough on both sides of the boat. The challenge of the 47, Justin, was that uh, uh, when you had people here, uh, they, were, they needed to ask other two to move.
refrigeration on this boat is, is almost obsessive, but that's the way we boat in the United States. We always want our cold drink. So you have two refrigerator and an ice maker here. Yeah. You have an ice box uh, insulated drain under the deck over there. You Which could also be used maybe as, as a, a storage bait, a if you wish. Box, if you're is fishing. It, yeah. Yep. You have another insulated drain box and that is a pizza slice, a cushion okay. over there, that's an insulator. You have a power refrigerator in the bow and you have a refrigerator, a freezer and a wine cooler in the lower deck. So I always say if you get out of cold drinks on a Verve 48, uh, you have uh, a problem. You're a big drinker. Yeah, you have <laughs> a problem. There have been changes and quite substantial changes and the hard top is one of those, isn't it? It looks like you've got more protection. The R top, the R -top protection increase, you're 100% right, but we also added, we redid the mold completely. We added this feature, which is uh, extremely beautiful at night. It's all backlit and you see the This is the Asmod logo, logo, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's incorporated. Production uh, never liked me much for this. It's very difficult to make. It takes a lot of hour, a lot of body work, but the final result, especially at night, is outstanding. But more so, we have incorporated now an electric uh, uh, openable roof. Uh, which is uh, phenomenal at night if you have a beautiful sky and stars or even, believe it or not in the winter with cold weather have the sun enter from the roof it provides uh, extra use. Yeah. In addition of course to air conditioning we have four air conditioning inlet at the helm so you have air conditioning and natural ventilation so excellent. Let's move on to the stern platform where we have probably the, the biggest change of all so let's take a look at that. So again, I remember on the 47, you had four racing Mercury 450 horsepower outboards, um, total horsepower 1800, top speed, I believe 50 knots. You've got three, but these are the new 600 horsepower Mercury outboards, but they're not ordinary outboards. It's the same total horsepower, 1800 again, I imagine the same performance, but then, as I said, they're not your standard outboards. Tell us more. Well, that's, we, we, we talk about uh, at the beginning about innovation and that's, uh, we focus on innovation which benefit the consumer. And the reproportion uh, package of the Ver 48 uh, is all for the benefit of the consumer. Starting from the, we redesigned completely the mold of the, of the transom of the boat because you're right, these, these engines are the first outboard in the world which do not move. So they have pods underwater, they are moving to steer the boat, but the unit don't move. That means that we can get that close to the engines because the way you see them is the way they are. And we could build all around it this incredible walkable area. Uh, another very, very significant difference between the 450s and these is noise. Nobody like noise. The 450 are phenomenal performance engine, very strong racing power, but the, the, the deficit of that where they are pretty loud. These are incredible. We'll appreciate that during the sea trial later. You will understand what I'm talking about is night and day. Fuel consumption, they're more efficient. And they have a transmission. So they have a first gear and a second gear, to make a long story short. Mm -hmm. So they help a heavy boat like this with a lot of uh, content to get out of the hole, we say in, in get America, up out of the water, get up on plane yeah. much faster because they have a first gear, which is a reduced ratio, and then a second gear to get up to speed. Okay, so the, the foredeck area, um, this looks pretty much like the 47. I remember you had a C-shaped sofa here. You had the sun pad with the reclinable uh, backrest. There is the opportunity for, for, a, for a small movable table, clearly, here. Has anything changed in this part of the boat? Well, Justin, this is exactly where the mission was impossible ah. because we <laughs> couldn't really add, remove, or change anything from here. We got feedback uh, from all markets and uh, this area has been spot on from hull number one of the 47. And uh, as we say, you don't, you don't move and touch a, a, winning, a winning team. I would say we've taken in all the exterior areas. Let's have a look below deck. And by the time we're done there, we should be in time to take her out for a sea trial, right? 100%. Let's go. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Okay, so here we are below deck. Now, the 48 is, is uh, a boat designed for uh, overnight cruising or, or at most, I imagine, uh, a weekend getaway. 
So you have two cabins. We have an owner's cabin, a V-berth cabin forward. We have another uh, guest cabin, but there is a galley with all the uh, electrical appliances, which you'd expect to find in a galley. But I know Federico that you've said in the past that on a boat like this, you're probably not gonna be doing much cooking, right? But everybody is gonna be using their head. So you wanted to be sure that you had a good sized bathroom, right? Yeah, you got it 100% right, Justin. I mean, we, we baptize internally and then we brought it out on the market that the, the Verve collection has a weekender. So it's a boat where you can sleep on board very comfortably. This boat actually sleep up to six, because don't forget, this become a bed as well. This becomes an extra But breath. yes, I mean, nobody will cook a gourmet dinner in the galley of a 48 footer. Uh, you know, that's for certain. But guests sleeping on board, as well as uh, friends and family visiting when you're out on the water, everybody will use the head. Mm. So that's why we provide a 60 feet uh, ergonomics and dimension of a head in 48 feet, and that head is uh, phenomenal. You have an enclosed shower with a glass and bench, and so, yeah. The bathroom is very important, it's phenomenal, but uh, you know, the, the lower deck as a whole is extremely welcoming. Mm -hmm. Are there any other tweaks or changes with respect to the 47 down here? Well, uh, that's another area where the mission was actually impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, is uh, is uh, the lower deck is exactly uh, identical to the uh, 47, which was extremely successful. And we didn't see any need to again change a team which works and win. Exactly. Why reinvent the wheel? Okay, so we've seen outside, we've seen inside. Let's take a first spin. That's. Let's go. <laughs> where you can appreciate really the hull design by Michael. It is such an amazing boat. You can, you can tell the boat is on rails, literally. And uh, with the ventilated tunnel, which, which also prevents the stern from skidding out, it right? It just yeah. doesn't skid at yeah. all. I mean, I'm always blown away. As, uh, literally, you feel like the boat is so stable, so on rail, yeah. you can close you can close stern in a glass of water. Look at this. And it still doesn't skid at all. And then as soon as you make it straight again, it pick up speed in a heartbeat. So really, Michael did an amazing job. Of course, you can compensate with a little extra travel. And, and you said also the, the 600s are quieter than the 450s, the racing engines. Yeah. That is uh, absolutely right. And that was probably, that is the biggest challenge from a consumer feedback standpoint of the 450s, really noise. Because performance are great, but they're racing engines, they're V8, so by nature they're louder. And uh, so noise is kind of, can be disturbing after a couple of hours. Okay, Federico, you, you've convinced me. Can I have a go? Oh, you, you, you <laughs> must have a go. <laughs> you you well, not only can, you must. Let me finish this spin. And that is all yours. And I'm sure it will be hard to take your hand <laughs> off this wheel once you get it. There you go. Here Drive. we go. All okay. yours. Here, come, come on the other side. Will do. To me. I'll take advantage of the new layout. Okay. And of course, yeah, you use the new passageway on the 47. You wouldn't have been able to do that. That's correct. So still at 30 knots, just over 30 knots. As you said, feels very assured, very solid in the water. No skidding. Can you see how the active trim is uh, removing any asshole from the consumer and the trim is automatically controlled and you see the boat is extremely flat. Exactly. So visibility is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. 
so the Verve range we've established a, a, a yachts designed for coastal and freshwater playgrounds, but very much with, with an American uh, on the water lifestyle in mind. But of course, Adamant wouldn't be debuting the 48 in Cannes if it wasn't also interested in enticing European clients. So what would you say, Federico, is a typical European client profile for this kind of boat? Well, uh, as we said at the beginning, uh, we, we see it in every other field. I mean, cultures are melting. Thank God we are, we are more becoming and taking what is good from, from every angle. So yes, I mean, uh, this is, uh, I'm the perfect example. I'm an I'm a American boater and I'm an Italian European boater. And this will be the perfect boat for, for instance, example, you, you, you are in Sardinia. What do you want more than this? Sardinia, you go bay hopping. You want to be fast, you want to be out in the morning, go and change two, three locations in a day and then go back at night to the, the place you came from and have all the comfort and food and drinks and spend good time on board. So yes, the European uh, uh, boater is welcoming the Verve. And leading on from that, uh, we have the 42, we now have the new uh, 48. Any plans to build bigger? What's in the pipeline for the Verve range? Well, that's a very Good question, Justin, because uh, with this new 600, uh, you know, never say never. Possibilities are there, uh, comfort is there, the noise is there. Uh, they well, the are lack engines, of noise. Uh, the yeah. lack of noise, meaning the noise uh, factor yeah. is, is taken care of. And uh, more than anything, they are designed, they are workhorses. They are designed to move uh, weight. And uh, when you go bigger, of course, you want to offer the customer more and more, unfortunately, weight. So yes, I think we have a decent plan that uh, I would say wait and see. You know, I think what is always full of uh, beautiful surprises to come. So watch this space, in other words. Watch this space. Let's go back. Thank you.